Joining us now is one of our fellow Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commissioners, Ronnie Dahl, of course, with, with us here in the studio, is the Cable Commissioner. And joining us is another one, Phil Ross from the city of Sylvan Lake with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Mr. Ross, thank you for being with us. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Ronnie. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you? How's your family doing? Doing, doing very well, considering. Phil, how are you feeling? I feel fine, uh, other than uh, having some shortness of breath and such as part of my uh, kidney disease, but uh, otherwise, in good condition. So do you want to fill everyone in a little bit about your personal story? One of the reasons why we have Phil on with us today is there's been a bit of a social media campaign behind you and your search for a kidney, correct? That is correct, yes. How did this get started? It's a great website, by the way. Who designed it? Uh, well, that's part of the story. And um, what happened was uh, I've always had uh, some kind of a kidney issue for most of my life, probably from a childhood infection is what my doctor says. And it was, he called it slow and simmering. And it was just kind of going along, steady, steady. We just kept monitoring it. Well, I, we were in Utah recently, uh, this last February, and we were in some high altitudes, and I started to notice I'm just really short of breath, you know. So when I got back home, I went to my doctor. My doctor said, uh, oh, you're having heart problems. You're going to need a catheterization for sure. And so I went, and that scared me. I went to my cardiologist. He did all kinds of tests and said, no, nope, you have no heart issues, but your kidney function is alarming. <laughs> and um, so I immediately went back to my nephrologist and he says, yeah, you're basically gone off the cliff. <laughs> and um, there's a number that's called the GFR, which is the ratio. Uh, it's supposed to be above 59. I'm at 13. So yeah. When I get down to the like six to nine GFR range, then I'd have to end up on dialysis. And what that could has, be within months. Phil, I'm sorry. What has this been like to have that stress, but then on top of it to be going through it during COVID-19? Is that an additional right. worry for you? Yes, it is very much so. Um, the, the issue is to have anything happen to get a transplant, I have to be evaluated and I have to get on the transplant list. The transplant list is for basically a deceased donor, but even if you have a living donor, nothing can happen unless you're on the list. So I couldn't get on the list until the clinics were open for me to get physical uh, evaluations. Fortunately, that did happen last week. I was able to get evaluated and I'm now officially on the list as of Tuesday. <laughs> so, I, progress is happening and I'm moving forward. That's absolutely good to hear. Phil Ross, a Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commissioner with us on the Oakland County Megacast all across the Oakland County area on TV, on radio, and on the web. Um, so donors are absolutely critical in, the, in this case. Um, when, when you do get a, when someone does get a kidney donation, when someone with kidney disease receives a new kidney, does, does that solve the problem or is there still, is there, is there still some recovery to do going forward and some adjustment to do going forward to prevent any reoccurring of any of the kidney disease uh, from before? No, uh, the type of disease I have will not affect a new kidney. It was probably something that happened when I was a child, maybe an infection. So it was a, probably a one-time thing. So a new kidney will not be, uh, suffer the same consequences. So the only change will be that I'll be on certain medications or whatever, but it should restore my energy levels. It sh I should be able to live a fairly normal life. That's excellent news, and, and, and we're, our thoughts are definitely with you, Phil, and hopefully, hopefully you'll receive what you need very soon and be able to make a recovery and uh, live a very happy life going forward uh, without, the, uh, without the suffering that comes from kidney disease. On another note, uh, the Cable Commission has had the shift, like many commissions and boards have, all throughout the, the state of Michigan and throughout the country to more virtual meetings. Uh, your, your thoughts on that new process? Some enjoy it. Some are okay with it given the circumstances. Some really don't like it. Uh, have you been in, involved in any of those virtual meetings during this process, and what are your thoughts on it? Yes, I've been pretty much involved with all of them. Um, we have the meetings regularly, uh, two or three a month, actually. Uh, 
I missed the uh, general meeting, which is open to all the public. So, uh, but the public is, you know, welcome to come and join the Zoom meetings also. But um, it's it's worked out very well. I've been very pleased with, especially how the uh, cable commission has uh, handled this. Yes, it's worked out very well. And in terms of of how your life has changed during this, everyone's daily life has changed. How we communicate with our loved ones, our friends, our family. Uh, and, and how we just go about routine portions of our lo- of our lives. How has that been different for you during the, during this process? What's your story of, of with COVID nineteen? Well, I, most of my family is out in the West Coast. My son and grandchildren, and my daughters in Colorado, and so uh, missing physical visits with them during certain occasions. For instance, tomorrow is my grandson's graduation from preschool. And then it's going to be a Zoom meeting instead of actually being out there. And I don't like that, but uh, you have, that's something you have to live with. But there's positives too. We've been, as a family, we've been connecting more often. Um, it was recently the passing of my uh, anniversary of my mother's uh, passing, and uh, our whole family got together on a Zoom, which we haven't we haven't had that many family members together in one location for years and years. So that was nice. Phil Rosso, Greater West Bloomfield Cable Communications Commissioner, with us on the show today. Phil, anything else you'd like to say before we let you go? Yeah, I'd just like to have people look at uh, www.papaphilcan.com. And if you think you can uh, raise your hand to be a hero donor, it would be much appreciated. What's the process for an individual? Is there a test that they have to go through to see if they would be a match for you? Yes, there is. There's extensive testing. So uh, there's an initial test just to rule out, you know, people who are obviously not going to be a can- good candidate. But if they pass that test, then they go into much, much deeper testing. And the interesting thing is people who uh, actually get in line to be tested for a donor actually end up living longer at an average because they tend to do such thorough testing that they find things that people even didn't even know they had and they can be treated. So it's a, there is an advantage to actually doing that. Well, more information on that again, as Phil mentioned, papaphilcan.com, P-A-P-A-P-H-I-L-C-A-N.com. That, that and more, uh, more information on kidney disease and Phil's story is on that website. We encourage you to take a look, and uh, we'll, have, we'll have Jeff, our producer, post a link to that also on our, on our website so you can go to our coronavirus news and, and see that and more information based on what you heard today. Phil, thank you very much for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you.